uh, I'm the councillor with the New South Wales Aboriginal Land Council. I'm the councillor for the North West. And we've had quite a number of days this week working with teachers from the connected community schools, uh, particularly in a, trying to re-engage our children back in school, particularly with the, you know, the many social conditions and, and issues that confront our children. They refer to this as um, a midden, that there's been a test hole done just there. Wildlife. And they dated that midden there 36,000, 37,000 years old, give or take a few years. Connecting to Country was a three day program devised by the New South Wales AECG for connected um, communities uh, to have as part of their cultural awareness training for staff. The program here in Walgett was devised um, through the co collaboration of the AECG and the school staff. like how we can include culture into education, revitalising language. So it's ready to go on the fire. Okay. So off you go. Thank you. They might make mine. In terms of the education um, growing up here um, in Walgett and going through the high school, if you go up there, you see my name on that um, board up there. Michael Anderson, 1968. That's high school chapel. One of the things we didn't like was the attitude of teachers. And because we didn't like it, and because we were sort of reasonably smart and understood what was going on, and that we were at the school to learn, not to mess around. The thing that happened was that a lot of my cousins, a few groups, all said, you the captain, captain, what are we going to do? These fellows are not teaching us properly, they're racist. Told the city on our side, told them we're always troublemakers. So I said, all right, let's do it. Let's all go on strike. The way we protested was that we sat out in the middle of the football over at that high school. The result was, no one got in trouble. Quite frankly, the Department of School Education sacked everyone who worked in this high school. The net result from that, we ended up with school teachers, we ended up with professors, we ended up with all sorts of black people who came out of Walter High School very well educated. Somewhere the wheel fell off. Unfortunately, the system that's happening for, for us right now is inculturation, it's not education. And I don't want to be inculturated and assimilated, I want our kids to be educated, not inculturated and assimilated. And there's a very big difference. You're on basically in the heartland of the Ualiai nation. I've been taught by the old ones. If you can't name the key mountain places, if you can't name the key bends of the river, you know nothing about culture and there are several ways of learning it. Our way of learning, of course, is very different from the way you um, teach. And uh, ours is more on country, ours is about ceremony. And for those people who put all those books out there thinking that that's the gospel, always read them with caution because when you come from a secret society, you don't tell your secrets. Hey, you wanna come up this way? We going up this way? We'll start here. On our way up, this one here, there's the one we call Buddha. That's the spiritual one. This one's used for smoking. This one is also important for women. When the women have the babies, and this is, I can tell you this because I, I can't tell you any more about it, but at the birthing centres, there's special birthing places uh, for our mob, a lot, right along this narrow river. They dig a hole so far down and then they put a log across it. And they, the old grandfather is the fellow who light the fire and burn this inside that fire, inside. And he warms the ground when they bring the woman over when she has the baby. They then put that in, all these leaves spread it around. 
So the steam then, while that woman's giving birth, you have that steam, you have a purified air. Now, that's one of the things I think we've got to do in schools. If we're going to connect with kids better, I think it's probably also one of the things we need to do in our courts. We need to know it. If the courts are going to understand those kids. But I think if we, if we want them to understand why their community sometimes seems so fractured and disjointed, why there are problems there, why there are even at times you know, problems in the leadership there, we've got to make them understand this history. The last bridge you come across, uh, I don't know if you noticed the name, it's the Dangar Bridge. And if you know anything about Henry Dangar, uh, if they had had ICAC hearings back in the middle of the 19th century, uh, they'd still be running today and Dangar would still be before them. But Dangar is also... Uh, I asked a group of teachers here the other day who knew him. No one knew him, but uh, Clemo at the back knew him. And I asked him, well, who was he, Clemo? And Clemo said he was a bad white bastard. Uh, and he is a bad white... He was a bad white bastard. He was the uh, owner of the, the station there at Mile Creek. And every day, the people from Gingi, since this place was established, this place here, I think, in the 1940s, they go over that bridge. And, and I think a lot of us think that they don't know who Dango was. But Clemo does, and I'm sure the other people of Gingi t do too. And, and those memorials are sort of what's, uh, what's been wrong with the way we've told Australian history in the past, you know, at, at least until the 1970s because we've only told it through our perspective, the non-Aboriginal perspective. And, and we thought that there is no Aboriginal history. And we, didn't, we never had this concept of a, of a shared history either. It's still difficult, I think, for us to confront that very, conf that very confronting, that very painful, that very tense colonial past. And, and that's, that's here on the walls. Uh, Dangar doesn't get a mention, but the date of Mile Creek is there. The date of the Mile Creek massacre is there somewhere. When we were here, one of the wonderful things that happened here, because there, there are positive things that happen in this history, and in 2000, a group of kids from here went, went across to Mile Creek, and it was at the beginning of the revival, the real revival of language here. And of course, with not... With, with, Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal survivors of Mile Creek, those kids went across to Mile Creek and sang in language. And it's again why this mural is so important. Well, it's interesting because the brogger is the one that taught us music. The brogger is the one that taught us our dance. There, so that animal is a very important animal for us because that's, that's one of our teachers. There's a footstep in every single one. I think some program, some education program should be begun here in Australia to educate the white man. I was about 14, I think I was one of the youngest fellas, and I wasn't supposed to be uptown that day when they had that march out in front of you, but, you know, stubborn black fellas like we are, we snuck uptown and went around the back way there. But one of the things that really inspired me was, here they game bastards. And we said that simply because, you know, Walgett was a pretty rough place. It was great because, you know, I saw this man here on the streets in Walden, um, taking these people on. None of us knew Charlie from the Bar of Soap. And let's not bullshit, Walden is still a rough place. I, I call it a space place. myself and three other fellows put up the Aboriginal Embassy on the front of the Parliament the House. And, and we got in their faces and we changed history, Aboriginal history. We may have come a long way in terms of the bricks and mortars and all, you know, education achievements and various other things, but there's a hell of a lot going on in this country that has to be fixed up. We've really scratched the surface in terms of human rights in Australia. We haven't come anywhere near where we should be. Have a look at the prison statistics, have a look at how many kids are killing themselves around this country, have a look at the institutions, the child, child institutions, how many are in jail. What we do is we tend to look too much at the superficial stuff and not look at the racism deep down in this country. And we've got a long way to go, it's a hard fight and I'm not going to stop fighting. <laughs>